Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. In the last video, I made a brooch and adapted the old egg chuck to make the brooch, turning this into an infinite axis chuck. The brooch disc was mounted here on the outside with this tenon, and then I cut interesting features with a axis that is skewed from the horizontal onto the surface of the chuck of, of the disc. Very interesting, but as I considered it, there's a lot more possibilities with this. More than infinite access, it's infinite possibilities. I decided to try what is often a rite of passage for wood turners, and that is an eccentric turning, but using this egg chuck, or now infinite access chuck. So this wood is elm, and I did turn the various plates by increasing the angle and increasing the offset as it went as I worked from the top to the bottom. Now perhaps I could have made the inner diameter a little bit smaller but this is elm and it's pushing it. it it's not great wood for this project but good demonstration of the technique. So let's make this eccentric turning using now the infinite axis chuck. Step one Fasten timber to Chuck's tenon. Either good double stick tape or hot melt glue will do. This needs to be a solid joint, even if it is temporary. I'm orienting the wood on the lathe's axis for the roughing out. Step two, rough out. By the way, I'll be keeping the tail stock in place as long as possible through the entire project to maintain pressure. Step three, adjust axis number one. Since the effective arc will decrease as I move down the timber, I'll start with about a quarter inch offset. Next, I'll cut a cove slightly down from the top. I plan to come back to the top later to finish the tip. Meanwhile, I want to leave a substantial mass of wood at the top to accommodate the tailstock in different offset positions. I'll use a small spindle gouge through most of this turning. I'll sand the groove now, since I may never be able to return. Step 4. Adjust axis number 2. I'm rotating the timber between 90 and 120 degrees and increasing the offset from the center axis by a little bit more. Now I'll cut the next groove. I'm cutting a lot of air. Time to sand again before the point of no return. Step 5. Adjust axis number 3. Again, I'm rotating the timber between 90 and 120 degrees more and increasing the offset from the center axis by a little bit more. Now I'll cut the third groove. Time to sand again, you guessed it, before the point of no return. Step 6. Adjust axis number 4. Offset more in angle and a little bit more in distance from the center. You guessed it, time to sand again. Step seven, adjust axis number five. Offset more in angle and a little bit more in distance from the center. All cuts need to be with a very light touch. Yep, time to sand again. Step eight, I'm out of wood. So adjust axis back to the original center, first to trim the top. Here I had to cut back into the first groove because of cracks on the end of the wood. I'm disappointed. And of course, sand this area before moving on. Step 9. Time to focus on the base. It's too fat and heavy. I want a slight cove to the very bottom. Without the tailstock support, I took too heavy of a cut and the jig shifted. My turning took a little damage from the episode that I had to sand out.
Finally, using a parting tool, I'm parting the temper off just above the hot melt glue. I figure this way I can cut more of a cove in the base. I like my little eccentric turning and it's another use for the infinite axis chuck. I'll incorporate it into more projects later. We'll see you again next week. Please leave your comments. If you can find it, please click the thumbs up button down there. That's the one pointing up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.